The ground up I built it with the intent of bringing my town up Y'all getting all wound up Y'all getting up To telling me y'all this impossible I'm looking at him like nah that's an obstacle bruh The, the rape and the attack happened in 20, uh, 2005, but it's something I live with daily, I'm not going to lie. It is uh, little things like when I'm coming home at night, I still get very nervous driving, especially if I'm alone, um, or um, sometimes when I'm in a club or in a social setting, if a guy is very aggressive with me, there are instances where I've burst into tears. Like I still feel fear, and that's why I think um, at work, more than anything, I have a lot of control issues because I feel, I feel safe and in control of what is going to happen, more or less, if that makes any sense. But it, 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 I, I, was, I was very angry about it. Um, I felt like out of all, and, and that's just a stupid thing to say, but I, I, it's the way I felt. I was like, out of all the people in the world, why me? And I'm sure everyone thinks that way. Like, I've been good, I've been a model citizen, I've done nothing wrong, I'm not promiscuous. Like, why, me? why would I be attacked and beaten? You have to understand that that's what life is. Life is messy, life is pain. Life is, is it's, it's not happy days, uh, you know, right through the year. You will go through things. Um, I think uh, what it did is, just like me going into radio and making it work, this whole ugly incident um, surprised me in terms of how strong I was. Because um, if you had told me beforehand, this is going to happen to you, I would say, you know what, I can't live through that. I don't think I'd be able to live through it. I would, I would want to die. Like, there's no way I'm going to survive. I would never believe anyone who said that you'll be back at work a, a week later and, and thriving. And I, I, I'll, I'll be like, that's rubbish. But once, it, once <laughs> something like this happens to you is when you realize how much strength you have. And that's when your character needs to kick in, your strength needs to kick in, um, and your faith needs to kick in. Um, and, and for me, it was just tunnel vision. I'm like, I just need to make it through this dark period um, to a point where at least I, f I, I feel normal again. I didn't feel normal at all after that. Um, but my radio was my therapy because I had so many people every day to talk to. Not about my incident, but just to talk to, and it helps, you know. I, I, always, felt, I always felt happier. Um, um, and, and really lucky, to be quite honest, after a radio show. And, and that's another thing why I say that, just like a marriage, your career is so important. It is so important. You, will, you can't believe how much, how much um, it, get, it brings to you until when you're going through tough times, um, sometimes your work really does help. And you know, they say like, especially for men, when men go through breakups, they throw themselves into work and, and everything. And I could see that for myself. After my incident, I just threw myself into work. And it was so, it, it was the best therapy anyone could give me. So it's important for you to love, love your work. Um, sometimes it'll be a crutch. Sometimes it'll be something that you need just to get through the day because you're going through so much crap personally. Yeah. Um, till today, though, um, I do have problems. Uh, with, I guess, trusting people, which is not a bad thing, because I, I do feel, personally and even at the workplace, you do have to be a little discerning about who you work with, who you engage with. So that's a, that's a good thing. My antennas are always up, and, uh, and, and that, that's fine. Um, but it, yeah, it is, it, is, it is still a struggle. It is very difficult for me to open up uh, to people. It takes me a long time. I need to... to, to to spend a lot more time with people to, to really let my guard down, yeah. But that's not a bad thing. It could be worse. <laughs> At least I'm not going around killing people or something. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. So um, I think everyone copes 
differently, you know, with situations like this. So there's no formula that I can give that will work you know, for, for every woman who's gone through this. Um, I do know after it happened and after, I, I didn't talk about it, so there's always a rumor because it was so difficult for me to process at first um, and I had totally shut down for years. So then when I felt ready to talk about it, then people were like, oh my God, it actually did happen. Um, I started getting a lot of women stopping me in, in the supermarket, at the mall and parking lots and telling me about their experiences. Uh, people I worked with, I had no idea they had gone through the same thing, um, and, I, and which I find, I understand it because it was difficult for me to talk about initially, but I, it makes me feel really sad that, you know, this is something that happens to so many women, but we're, we never talk about it. It's like this stigma, and it's, it, it's not your fault. Like, you had nothing to do with it. If I could have punched those guys out, I would have, but I couldn't, you know, and they had a gun to my head. What am I, what are you supposed to do? So you can't keep blaming yourself and you can't think less of yourself as a person. It's just, it's something that happened to you and that was done to you. Um, but I did go, well, it was recommended, of course, to go for counseling. Now, unfortunately for me, I did one session and it just was not for me at all. It was one of those, okay, sit back and close your eyes. What do you think and what do you feel when I say this? And I was like, this is just rubbish. Like, it just, it irritated me more than anything and it didn't help me. So, but for some people, therapy does help. I think because we're so different as human beings, um, you need to find what works for you. What is it that gives you that relief? It could be cooking. It could be talking to your best friend about it. It, it could be working out or running or whatever it is that really brings that relief on a daily basis. For me, it was radio. Radio is, has always been my one true love. So it just made sense that, that that helped. And another thing that helped for me personally, you know, and that's why I say people are different because some women find it very difficult to, to hang out with men thereafter. I was because, as I said, I was a very weird, awkward child. I was a tomboy, a complete tomboy. And I was used to hanging out with boys more than girls because girls were into makeup and hair and I was just like this ugly duckling who was hanging out with the boys and stuff. And, and so I'm, I'm very comfortable around, in fact, I feel safer around guys because I've grown up with a lot of guy friends. So the same thing after, what helped me after the whole rape is that I had so much support from my male friends and it made me feel safe. It made me feel like, you know what, there's still good guys out there. There's still guys that will protect me and take care of me. It's not like all men are gonna, you know, are, are gonna break me down. And that helped me a lot, having a lot of, uh, you know, guys that I could talk to and hang out with. And, and when we're out, they're always looking out for me. I'm not in a relationship, no. I'm, I'm dating, going on dates. Um, I think that's the problem is that again, <laughs> oh my God, people are gonna hate me for saying this, but I have, I, I tend to think that um, men in, the men in Kenya, huh, <laughs> at least in my experience and a lot of my friends' experiences, they will seem fine at first, most of the guys you go on dates with, and then after a while, something will come out like they're on drugs or um, they have, um, um, you know, a couple of, I'll say girlfriends to be polite, um, uh, on the side. I've never, it's very difficult to meet somebody normal and genuine. That's my problem. So unless I'm just attracting the crazies, but, <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't date so much for that reason because I guess also because I have trust issues and because I've seen firsthand, um, how, uh, awkward situations like this can end up when you find out who, who they really are. I tend to, I tend to be um, more focused on work than dating, which is a bad thing, but yeah. You know, the men of Kenya, though, will also, I've heard this so many yeah. times, so many of my guy friends are like, there are, no, there are no wife material women left. You know, there are no mothers left. All, uh, the only girls they hook up with are materialistic and gold diggers and are sleeping around and all sorts of things. So it goes both ways. So sometimes I wonder if we're both um, men and women, if the problem is where we've been through so much pain and hurt, in the past that we tend to gravitate towards 
the people that are wrong for us instead of, because there are good guys and there are good women, but why don't these two ever date? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's like you tend to attract the opposite of, of what you are sometimes. Hmm. To starting off, I'm a traditional Catholic, okay. so and that's how I was raised. And my belief is, you know, the funny thing is, I know that like now I'm at my, in my late 30s, and I know I should have this craving to get married and settle down, but I don't. Um, I because I think I have a bigger fear of marrying somebody that I will be miserable with, you know. And I so so the the thing is. It's, it's, it's a lot like just having faith that what's meant to be, it will be. And if, if the plan in my life is to get married and have children, it'll happen. If it's not, I'll accept that. But it's not like I sit around and, and, and think about it, to be quite honest. Um, a lot of my female friends are like, oh my God, I need to find a husband. Like, we're getting so old. And I've never felt that way ever because I feel, personally, I feel love and marriage is something natural. It's something that... I will gravitate towards that the man that I'm dating will make me want to be a wife and want to be a mother. It's not that it's not like I need to buy a phone or I need to buy a house. It's not a, yeah. you know, it's something that's, that, that you just feel inside, you know, and, and I need to be with a person who inspires me to want that and be with a person who I can fully trust will be with me, you know, long term because it's, that's, that's the difficulty for me. Um, I always say in my family that we were brought up, once you get married, that's it. There's no separation nor divorce that we don't believe in it. So I'm extra careful about that because I have had a few relationships that I think back and I'm like, oh my God, if I ever, if we got married, it would have been, it would have been psychotic. It was just unhealthy and toxic. And I don't want that for myself long-term. I think marriage is so beautiful and, um, that's what I'd want for myself, just a beautiful, stable marriage. Yeah. And until that comes along, I'm happy to wait. If it's not in the cards, it's not in the cards. It's not, it's not, it's not something that I worry about much. The ground up. I built it with the intent of bringing my town up. Y'all getting all wound up. Y'all getting up. Telling me, yeah, it's impossible. I'm looking at it like, nah, that's an obstacle, bruh.